Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to invite upon Dr. Shairah Lebal Lutfi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I hope I don't get glossophobia, whatever that was. Because I really don't know whether I can finish in 15 minutes. I have quite a few things to share. But, all right. Now, my title is supposed to be Internationalization of Emotion, but somehow it's changed to Internalization, internalization of Emotion. Both also can lah, to do bakai. Effective Computing for Emotion Thinking. Now, what is that? First, we will start with this video. I always start with this video to give some idea and motivation of why we are doing this. Please watch. I'm very surprised to see this verdict to, to come on me because I was not expecting that. When I came, uh, they told me something else and I'm coming. You, you got an idea of that, so it's a big surprise in me. A big surprise. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Can you please guess what was the emotion that was depicted? He said it's surprise. Right? He was shocked. What happened was Guy Cuny is a guy that went for interview there at a, at a TV station as the driver. But he was wrongly put in the limelight because he was taught to be the CEO of some multimedia company. Because he had the same name, Guy Cuny. Now, what mesmerizes me was that Prof Karim <laughs> is, is not his um, shocking face, but rather how adaptive he was to that environment. He was adapting, he did not, you know, run off like the you know, runaway bride. And also the host, the host adapted very well. She realized that was something amiss and she was adapting to the environment as well. That was surprising, you know, she was going on well in that kind of environment. Now, if we can have this little, little bit, one third of this um, intelligence, this is emotional intelligence. If you can have this kind of emotional intelligence in machine, we will be having an adaptive machine to the environment and so we can have a smoother human computer interaction nowadays we interact with machines more than we interact with humans right and therefore there is a need for the machines to think with emotion so that we can have smoother human computer interaction now how do we do this we program the machine to send and then respond Sense the emotion and responds appropriately. And to, to be able to do this, they must be able to close the effective computing loop. This is what the loop is confined of. We make the machine sense emotion. To sense emotion, that means to detect and try to recognize emotion, adapt using some machine learning abilities or some techniques, some methodologies, and then respond appropriately to the emotion that has been sensed so that they can have a smoother interaction. Of course, we don't expect them to respond like Khabib from UFC. <laughs> but if you whine too much, one day they might even be doing that. How do we do that? With several modalities. We use certain cues. We have facial cues, vocal. There are actually about 44 um, muscles in the face that we can use. Vocal cues, gesture, movement, gait the way you walk, all right? And also text, sentiment analysis. In the world of affective computing, it's not just about trying to model emotion, but we also try to model personality, attention, focus, lying, all kind of social things that we try to infuse in emotion, uh, with machines, sorry. Where is it applied? Nowadays, for example, in teaching and learning, we have too many e-learning uh, portals. We also have MOOCs, massive open uh, online courses. We can have tutors, for example, to be combined, I mean, to be um, used with this kind of application. This is one of the work that I've worked with my students, empathetic tutor. And also here, maybe I should play the file. Please listen to this.
This is a frustrated caller. Um, she called a call center. She was actually passed to a system and the system couldn't understand her. So imagine if you have a system that could understand people's emotion, once the, the caller got frustrated, you actually pass the caller to a real human instead of um, to machine. This would mitigate the frustration. We have also worked um, in 3D motion recognition where we were quite successful in trying to recognize universal emotions in 3D faces. Moving on to biometric. You have I some of you have iPhones. Can your iPhone recognize you to gain access? What if you have heavy makeup on? You know, like the A Asian makeup challenge kind of thing. So now what we try to do is biometric is not trying to recognize emotion, but rather to try to recognize uh, a person, whether you are you, he is him, she is her. In biometric, using face, this is normal. But what about occluded faces? For example, if you were wearing niqab, or if you were wearing shades or sunglasses, this is a challenge. And then we also added on with expressive faces. Usually we use neutral sample, but in this case, we had occlusion and we have expression. And we managed to get about 98% of accuracy. And there were also some servant systems that could benefit from um, emotion, emotionally intelligent machines. You can check in my website later. But do we use emotion in machines in all kind of applications? Do we need it? Actually, no. For example, in chatbots. Chatbots do not need emotion, actually, if you ask me. Because it's a very simple search system. And if you go and say, you know, this morning, chatbot, this morning, my son chewed on my, my charger and I need a new charger and he lost his tools and, you know, whatever, and he needs to go to a dentist. When you speak like that to a chatbot, it's not going to respond to you promptly. Okay? So we do not need to have natural interaction for all applications. In effective computing, a problem that we are facing, especially with the Western community that is working in this area, is that they have these templated applications of one size fits all um, concepts. It doesn't work. This is because emotions are actually recognized and expressed differently from culture to culture. The way you recognize emotion from an Arab may be different, and the way you express emotion from a German guy may be different. This is actually me. We worked on full-blown emotion before, but now we are working on trying to recognize subtle emotion because this is more relevant to culture-specific emotion. These are some of the AFAC-sensitive systems that needs to be more internationalized. Later, I'll be showing you some of the work that we are also um, worked on, and maybe I should play this video to show some confusion if you use the same kind of template. Imagine if you use this sample to train a system in, for agreement modeling and then you use it in Malaysia. It's going to confuse the system real bad. Okay? And also speaking style. Speaking style is very important, and we cannot just take a one-size-fits-all model and, you know, put it across board. What are, the, what are some of the cultural differences that we should think of? I mean, the parameters, if you are going to build emotionally sensitive system. Personality and sentiment, you'll be surprised to find out some agents that have curly hair and dark complexion like me um, receive less trust compared to a Caucasian one. This is from a study. 
and also medical agents that are black got less trust compared to a Caucasian medical agent. When I say medical agent, it means synthetic virtual agent. And we did a study not long ago and we found out that our tutor, um, virtual tutor, that we built in different races actually had different preference. Students prefer those tutors that are of the same race. And the result was quite significant. And personality trait prediction. We use sentiment analysis to try to um, uh, profile personality from Facebook. And what we found out is that Malaysian women are more neurotic compared to um, Americans. Maybe you don't agree. And display rules with face. If you're trying to model um, a Westerners, then you might want to look at the um, mouth compared to Easterners because they use more eyes. The expression is actually depicted using eyes. And we have all sorts of problems like masking, timidity. Malaysians are known to be non-confrontational, shyness. We have done some work in shyness in smile, trying to detect uncertainty through face, and we found out that Malaysians have different features compared to people from different cultures. Verbal rules. We also did um, some work on perception, cross-cultural perception of how something is being said compared to what is being said. Voice emotion perception studies, the Arabs think that our Malaysian anger in voice is more neutral. And we did a study with um, Japan and um, Spain. The Asians can understand the synthetic voice, uh, emotional synthetic voice from Spain, uh, Spanish synthetic voice, but they cannot understand the anger. They can understand the neutral and sadness, but they are very confused with the anger. And also we have done some work in European Union with Simple for All project to try um, to transplant different speaking style in different voices so that we use very little data. We have also came out with um, Emotion Malay Online Speech Interface. This is speech synthetic, synthetic speech in Malay with emotion. We have ample of uh, TTS for English, but not many in Malay. Gesture. Some Mediterranean people, they speak with a lot of expression, Italian, Spanish, Greek. And for Asians, we have less gesture. This also we need to consider. And emotion alone is not enough. We also need to trust, uh, model trust to have engagement, especially when we're using this kind of system in learning domain. What we found out is that vocal um, features with accent may got more trust from people. There are some things that we need to think about, like politeness. In the West, they use more nouns. If you go to somebody's house and they want to give you tea, or they want to add on the tea, they will say, more tea. We say, minum lagi, minum lagi. You know, we use more verb. And there are a few things. There are no anger, you know, in uh, detected in certain culture. And um, in Arabs, they do not have, no, sorry, for Tahitian and also Micronesian, they don't have equivalent word for emotion. Um, there's no equivalent exact translation for frustration for Arabs. And schadenfreude is a German word that means that you, you take pleasure from some people's pain. Uh, there's no English translation, but maybe in Malay we have lah, dengki. Lucky and considerate are two words that we need to consider when we do emotion annotation for Japanese. This is a collaboration work that I just embarked on with Intel. This is on digital signage, whereby the signage will be able to, should be able actually to detect the gender of the user or the onlookers rather, and also um, to personalize the advertisement that is being displayed to them. So for example, if the, the user is having, is a female and having heavy makeup, then probably they will be seeing more Sephora or Mac advertisement. And we're also doing some things on interestingness in video, trying to predict interestingness in video. For example, um, we have a bunch of benchmark data and we try to find out what is interesting in these trailers. We are starting with trailers and we will move on with um, advertisement as well. There are some interesting findings from this, especially when we found out that people find 
videos to be interesting when, it sh when the people in the video, the actors, are showing certain kind of emotion, be it negative or positive, rather than no emotion at all. And I would like to end with this 30 years old of adage. The question is not whether intelligent machines can have any emotion, but whether machines can be intelligent without any emotion. And if you're interested with more work in effective computing and human-computer interaction, especially in teaching and learning domain, please visit my website, shahira.com. Thank you very much.